Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand, and now I'm a work-at-home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you, so scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey guys, welcome back to the show this week. I am thrilled to be hanging out with you on this lovely Thursday or whenever you are catching up on your podcasts. And I am high energy because today we are recording with Cody Berman of Gold City Ventures, and he always brings the fire. He is the one person I know who can talk as fast as me and think and think on his feet just like like a superhero. So we are in for such a great time. If you are not familiar with Gold City Ventures, Cody and Julie are business partners and they uh, work together and bring all kinds of amazing digital product information to like the Etsy seller space. And especially since I cracked into digital products through like the the AI content I was creating, the AI mockups, I I get it now. I understand why it's like crack for some people because once you've created this product, you get the cha-ching and you're done. Etsy delivers it to them. Occasionally you get a DM, but otherwise it is so low maintenance compared to print on demand and for sure physical product sales. No hate, you guys know, no shade. I'm obsessed with both of those things. My whole background is physical products, but it is also a fun way to add additional streams of income. So Before we get into the interview, let me tell you about Cody. Cody Berman is a digital nomad who quit his corporate job to pursue entrepreneurship full-time. He started selling digital products in 2018 and became hooked after earning $700 plus in one week. He also hosts the Financial Independence Show. Also, Julie and Cody now have the Etsy podcast, What A Crickets to Cha-Chings, which is another great one to listen to. In Cody's spare time, you might find him traveling, working out, or building another business. He loves selling seasonal products. He earns a over six figures in passive income, quit corporate America in 2019 to pursue side hustles full time and reached financial independence by the age of 25. So we are in for a treat. We're going to talk all things passive income, the fire movement, digital products, Etsy, and it's going to be, it's going to be great. So please help me welcome Cody to the podcast. Hey, Cody, welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad you're back. It has been way too long, Lizzie. I am super excited for this. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's always a joy to talk with you or Julie. Gold City Ventures is just so near and dear to my heart. Um, I love everything you guys do, everything you represent. And so you're like just household name here in the How to Sell Your Stuff family. So just know you're loved. You're appreciated. Appreciate you as well. I have had a blast every single time I've been on your podcast. I'm always, I always see the podcast invite come through the inbox and I'm like, yes, this is, (laughs) this is one of the ones I'm looking forward to. So I am, uh, I'm excited for this. That's a relief to hear, Cody. You know, oh, here's that crazy smiley girl. That's <laughs> nice to have someone who's got like the same energy level as me. That's pretty. Actually, I feel like you're you're higher energy than me. It puts me to shame a little bit, but it's it's good for my ego. Um, but I feel like we have a lot of new listeners, a lot of people who maybe haven't gone all the way back and listened to our first episode together, which they should. I will I will link them the previous ones because there it's always exciting. But what I really love about you and Julie is you approach like kind of the Etsy coaching niche in a really different way than a lot of other people, like myself included, in that you're um it, it you came from the fire movement. And so I would love for you to start by talking about that. I just think it hits on a whole different nerve for people. Yeah, that's a good observation because we have always been profit first in terms of teaching people how to do this side hustle. Other people are creators. They just want a creative outlet. I think that's awesome too. Like I think creating digital products is a blast, but I always do it with the intention of I'm going to make money with this digital product. So you're right. I came from the fire world, financial independence, retire early is what that acronym stands for. So did Julie. We both had podcasts back in 2018. That's actually how we met. and. I was all in. I had heard of these people who are retiring in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s. 
Now, for people who are like, what the heck are you talking about? Like, this is, I'm starting yeah. the podcast off hot here, talking about fire yes. and retiring in your 20s, 30s, and 40s. So there's kind of two main ways to achieve fire. So most people in the fire movement, they live pretty frugally. They're saving a really high percentage of their income. That income could be from a day job or from entrepreneurship or from selling digital products or physical products on Etsy. So the two main ways to achieve fire is the first more traditional method is called the nest egg method. That is where people save up typically 25 times their annual expenses. So let's say you spend $40,000 per year. You need to save up 40,000 times 25, a million dollars and have that invested in the stock market. And then in theory, you can then just live off the investment income for the rest of your life. So that's that's kind of the quote unquote standard fire method. So I was really drawn to that. Yes. And there was a lot of people that I met who had actually done this, thought it was amazing. Then I figured out what we're going to talk a little bit more about today, which is cash flow fire. So with cash flow fire, all you need to do is take your baseline monthly expenses. Let's use that same person. Uh, public math is always hard, isn't it, Lizzie? So spending forty thousand dollars a year, <laughs> forty thousand dollars a year, which is, uh, th- I was like, well, how much is that per month? I honestly still don't know. As I'm babbling on here, so it's like thirty, oh, well, like thirty three hundred or something 000, like that. Divided 40, by twelve. Divided by twelve. Yep, three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars okay, and thirty three cents. Okay, okay, perfect. So this same person in that scenario, they could either get that million dollars saved up and invested and then live off the investment income, or they're spending $3,330 per month, they can figure out how to make $3,333 per month in passive in, in passive cash flow and passive income. Now, this could be one of the more popular ways to do this is via real estate. Other people do it with vending machines. Other people do it with all sorts of things. But when I discovered digital products, I'm like, wow, this actually kind of checks that box. This fits in that bucket because digital products are like 95% passive. I don't like to say they're hundred percent because the one thing I do have to do after I list a product is respond to the occasional customer message. I can't figure out how to download this. I, you know, page three, I don't really understand this thing. Doesn't take me very long each week, but it's mostly passive income. So once I kind of combined those two ideas together that I could use these digital products to achieve cash flow, financial independence, I was like, okay, I'm going to go that route because that seems a heck of a lot faster than saving up a million dollars in an investment account and living off the investment income. Like, I would rather figure out how to make, you know, $3,333 per month via passive or semi passive income. I can't keep saying that again. Let's just use a different number. I know. I know. <laughs> Four thousand dollars a month, whatever you want to call it, whatever your you know whatever your monthly expenses are, I would much rather figure out how to make four thousand dollars a month in passive cash flow than save up a huge sum of money and have that invested. So that's when I really went all in on digital products, and I was like, okay, this is it. All I need to do is get a couple dozen digital products that are doing really really well, and those could potentially support the cost of my lifestyle. So yeah, that's kind of where the fire movement meets. Etsy, Cody, and why I was so intrigued mm-hmm. by the side hustle in the first place. Do you play in other, you must play in other stuff as well. I know that Etsy is just one thing, right? Like, but you're looking at, you're trying to also, in addition to that, create multiple streams of income. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. At no one income. point I had <laughs> 25 plus income streams. I'm not even kidding, Lizzie. It was obnoxious and not in a good way. I was a little bit spread too thin. I think I couldn't mm-hmm. really focus. I'd much rather have five income streams, focus really intently on each of those and then just crush it with them instead of having like 25 different income streams and trying to make them all work. But yeah, I was, I was just a side hustler by trade. I was a dabbler. So that's why when I first heard about printables on Etsy, I think we've talked about this before in the last podcast, but for those who didn't listen to that, I had never even been on Etsy before. I'd never been on the website when I heard about the side hustle. I didn't know what a printable or digital product was. My friend Julie had told me about it and that she had made $6,000 in her shop from 50 hours of work and that her products were still selling today. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm doing freelance writing. I'm building websites. I'm podcast editing. I'm managing oh, wow. affiliate marketing campaigns, writing emails. for people. I was doing all of this like active income stuff where once I sent the invoice and once I got paid, didn't make me money anymore. So it didn't really kind of fit in this cash flow fire method where with cash flow fi, it has to be somewhat passive cash flow or kind of defeats the purpose. If it's not that, then you're just kind of working a job. You don't get paid unless you put in the hours. So that was why this side hustle in particular stuck out so much and why I ended up getting rid of 20 of the other ones that were just, it was me trading time. It was awesome. I would ma- I was making a ton of money, but it was me working 16, 18 hours a day sometimes doing all these random things just to make a buck. So that was why this one in particular stood out because I could kind of put in the time and effort 
at the beginning, make a ton of products for my shop, like put in the keyword research, do all that stuff. And then if I had a few winners, then those winners could just keep on making money for me over and over and over. It was almost like a little passive income machine. Once I found like a golden ticket product, once I found what I like to call a unicorn, something with high search <laughs> volume and low competition, that could potentially, again, earn me hundreds of dollars per month in mostly passive income. I, what I, something I really like about the way that you talk about this too, is I think that, I think that the way you cast the vision creates really reasonable expectations. I mean, I'm not, I have no problem with like fast success. Like that just happened with my, you know, AI mock-up shop where it was just like a hundred sales in less than a month. And it was very interesting. I have no problem with that, but I think that I've been in entrepreneurship for like 15 years. So I've got a lot of skills built on each other. And I like it when someone new coming to the table can have some some like healthy expectation. How long do you think it, you know, might take someone who's diligent to, to start creating several hundred dollars a month up to like a $4,000 a month semi-passive income with Etsy printables? So let's do some more public math. Let's see how this goes, Lizzie. Oh, <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> no, you don't even have to use a calculator. I think I should be able to do this. But just to give okay. people some real numbers, because I don't like I don't like setting unrealistic expectations either. I hate the people exactly. who are crouching in front of the Lambo on Instagram saying, you know, start this side hustle. You're, you'll start making $40,000 a month. Maybe some people are making $40,000 a month, but for the average person, it's not realistic. And they just really undersell the amount of work and the amount of luck that <laughs> that's involved to make that much money. So let's just use a real example. Let's say you have 20 products in your shop that are making 10 sales each month. Let's see if I can uh, do some math. Okay, 200 sales per month with those products at five bucks mm-hmm. a product, which is, I'm just using my shop as a proxy. That's that's the average price of a printable in my shop. That is $1,000 per month in mostly passive income. Now you can scale that up or down however you want. You could have you know 25 products, 30 products making 10 sales, 15 sales, 20 sales each month. However you want to chop this math up, like once you actually break it down into these micro goals, instead of saying, you know, I want to replace my day job. I want to start building $5,000 a month on Etsy. Instead, you can break it down and say, okay, how many products do I have to sell at a $5 price point to actually make $5,000 per month? You're like, okay, if it's $5 and I need $5,000 per month, I need to sell a thousand units. That could be you know, 200 things that's selling five times. That could be five things mm-hmm. selling 200 times. That could be 100 things selling 10 times. Like there's so many different ways to chop it up. And I think breaking things down, I know this is not directly answering your question, but I just like this framework. Breaking yes. things down into micro goals just makes things seem a lot more achievable than just hearing some person on a podcast saying, you know, I made $10,000 this month from that thing. It's like, well, how? Like, can you break it down? And it's it's just like this. It's building blocks. It's like I said before. Each passive income or each printable is like a little passive income machine in your shop. So every single time you get one of those 20 products that I just used in that example, every time you get a product that starts making 10 sales each month and it's a $5 product, like you just built a $50 little passive income machine in your shop. And if you keep doing that over and over and over again, usually they're not going out of fashion. Like I still have stuff that sells from 2018, 2019, 2020, like from the beginnings of my shop. So you see what I'm saying? Like it it continues to stack. It's not like you create something, it sells for a couple of months and then it just goes out of style. That's usually not the case for the products that I'm creating anyway, because I have a pretty specific keyword research process. They stack. So the stuff that I was selling years ago is still selling today. In addition to the stuff that I was selling last year, in addition to the stuff that I started selling six months ago. So it's kind of like a, it's, it's a pyramid. So every time you build an additional block, every time you add new products to your shop that start to sell, your passive income that month goes up. See, I think this is such a healthy way to look at it. And again, I'm actually, I have no problem with flashy either. I can get excited about, about, about both. But what is so refreshing about you guys is that you do take this approach and it appeals to a lot of people. So I love that. Do you or do you find that you spend time every week or every month adding products to your shop or do you, is it not that consistent necessarily? I personally don't. I used to for mm-hmm. the first couple of years and then I actually hired a virtual assistant to help me with my shop. So now I'm just kind of putting together and we can talk about, I know one of the topics we want to hit on and you've been really big on is AI. I pretty much put together keyword lists and I'll have like a bunch of short tail keywords and then we'll identify long tail keywords, me and my virtual assistant. And she will go and actually create a lot of these products and list them for me at this point. Now that I've been in the game so long and I understand it, 
as long as I have a really good rubric, like kind of a SOP, a standard operating procedure, this is how the listing images should look. Here's how the title should be formulated. This is how the description should look. This is how you're going to generate the 13 tags for your listing. This is how you should price appropriately. Now I have a whole formula for listing profitable products in my shop. And I just kind of handed that off to a virtual assistant. But again, this is probably not relatable to someone who's just starting out. So for the first couple of years, yes, it was it was all me. I was I was listing products every single week. But the point is, is that you have found a way to keep feeding the machine and we can aspire to looking at this as I'm not going to be actually having to have my hands in this forever. I can continue maintaining this income stream, but I can bring in some help to do it. So I think I still, I still think that proves amazing, amazing points. You know, something I've been kind of wanting to ask you guys about because you're so rooted in the digital space, the printables is like Etsy just came out a few months ago with the gift mode. And I'm wondering if that has affected how you're teaching or what your emphasis is or any part of your process for creating products with the, you know, are you more focused on giftable items because of it or has, does it, is it even mattering in the digital space? It definitely matters. So for me, my process hasn't changed at all. I just mentioned basically what I do, what I used to do was I would just think of a product idea. I'd go and create it in Canva and I'd list it and nobody would buy it because I didn't do the keyword research. I didn't understand buyer search intent. I didn't understand anything about what people were searching for and how to actually make the thing that people were searching for. I'm just going to zoom out real quick, actually, because I think this is another helpful framework. Making sales on Etsy is literally just solving this problem. There's someone typing something into the Etsy search bar. All you have to do is figure out what they're typing in, create the thing that they're searching for have an attractive listing image, make sure the title is exactly what they're looking for. And if your product looks good enough and is priced appropriately, and the actual product itself is pretty good and usable for that person, you are going to make a sale. That is the whole game. All you have to do is figure (laughs) out what they're typing in the search bar, create that item, make sure that again, all the boxes are checked. So you got to make sure that your title, your description, your listing images, all that stuff is good, which is we focus on that a lot in our course. And I focus on that a lot with my, my SOPs, my standard operating procedures for my VA. But that's that's the whole game. So to answer your question directly, with Etsy gift mode, my process hasn't changed at all. I'm still doing all of those things. I'm still creating these big keyword research lists, still going through and identifying, you know, what like I, I use that term unicorns, really high search volume, low competition, figuring out. So let's give a concrete example. The short tail keyword I might identify could be Father's Day card. Now from Father's Day card, there might be first Father's Day card, golf first Father's Day card. There might be a second Father's Day card. There's all of these like adjectives basically that you can add to a short tail keyword to then make it into a long tail keyword. And so I like to play in the long tail keyword zones. Now, where am I going with all yeah. this? So with- Micro niches, so th- guys, micro niches, yep. Micro niches, yes. All you need is, for me, this is my proxy. I like seeing a hundred searches per month for a given long tail keyword, and that's enough. Even 50 I've pursued sometimes if I don't see that anyone is fulfilling that searcher's buy intent. Like let's say, trying to think of an example on the fly here. Let's say that there is nothing for, what's that new game, pickleball. Let's say there's nothing for (laughs) for pickleball first Father's Day card. There's, you know, there's 50 searches a month and you go on Etsy and nobody's selling that thing. So, what do you think the people that are searching for it, they're typing that into the Etsy search bar, they hit enter, they see nothing. They, there's nothing that is a pickleball first Father's Day. Uh, and if pickleball is trademarked, disregard this and use a different example. I don't know oh, if good pickleball to know. is okay. a sport or if it's trademarked. I don't know. I don't know if it's like spike ball or if it's like volleyball. You know what I mean? I don't know if, if pickleball is the actual sport or if it's like some trademarked league. I don't know. I'm not a pickleball player, clearly. But <laughs> <laughs> if I am the sole seller of this item, All 50 of those people who are searching for pickleball first Father's Day card and I create this thing and it's, you know, a dad with a pickleball racket or however they play the game and it says happy first Father's Day on it. I am going to dominate those sales because I am the only person delivering exactly what those people are searching for. So again, round taking a big U-turn back to your original question about the Etsy gift mode. What does this mean? My process hasn't changed at all, but because Etsy is now pushing giftier products, by default, more people are searching for giftier products, or at least they're in the search results and seeing these giftier products more. Therefore, when I go into my keyword research tools like E-Rank, for example, I'll see that these giftier products have higher search volume. And therefore, just my pro- my process hasn't changed, but 
now I've kind of since shifted into creating more gifty products, if that makes sense. So it's the data that's it driving the decision. Sense. It's not like, yes. it's not me just saying, oh, you know, Etsy gift mode. This is awesome. Let me create all gifty stuff. No, I am staying to my data driven roots using the same exact process. And j- just now because Etsy is now pushing more gifty things. Now there's more you know, there's more um, search intent for those gifty things. So <laughs> therefore, I'm creating giftier things because the data tells me to. That was a very long-winded way to answer that question. But hopefully that kind of yeah, helps people think- get my thought process. Oh, totally. And I, honestly, there were so many layers of lessons in that. So that's just, that's wonderful. Because I was actually wondering, um, with the advent of gift mode, and I've gone in and played with it, and I feel like it drives people away from the search bar. So I'm very excited to hear that you're seeing lots of searches for gift items. It's still driving people to the search bar, maybe to get even more specific. That makes me very happy. Also, pro tip guys um you know people are like obsessed with like dog mom stuff i don't think there's as much dog dad stuff so if you really wanted to go crazy like get into e-rank or sales samurai or everby or whatever and like look up things like chihuahua first dad fathers or first fathers Day, like crazy stuff like that or like what have we talked about before there's one there's one dog that um dachshund doxy awesome. like people are still you know it's one of those underserved keywords and it blows my mind so i was just like guys look at this okay isn't it funny Super though? Fun. Thank you. People will always ask me. They're like, "Oh, this is so saturated." I'm like, "You can just no. you can complete, you can just layer down and down and down. Once you have seven adjectives describing a Father's Day card, then maybe you've niched down enough. But there are so many different sub niches you can get into that. Oh, it's yeah, it's a it's a whole playing like you're playing by yourself in some of those keywords because it's like it's just you serving that extremely extremely micro niche. And even if you can. Again, even if you can make 10 sales per month at, with a $5 product, that's 50 bucks. And if you continue to dominate that niche, that can become a little $50 every single month passive income stream for you. And those add up. Hey, hey, you guys. Coming in hot with a pro tip. Are you ready? Do you use special fonts, graphics, SVGs, or other digital goods to create your products or run your Etsy business? You need Creative Fabrica. So for years in my shop, I walked that fine line of either using stock fonts and graphics that were right there on Canva, and I had a ton of trouble differentiating myself because let's be honest, everyone else was using them too. Or I had to go invest a ton of money, sometimes hundreds of dollars, to buy them direct from a designer so I could create something extra unique and stunning, right? And don't even get me started about the whole factor of making sure I had a a commercial use license so that I could use it for business. It was a whole whole nother expense and hassle, to be honest with you. Um, but I have since found a better way, and I'm letting you in on the secret, okay? Enter Creative Fabrica. You guys, getting a membership to Creative Fabrica has been a game changer for me, okay? I've literally saved thousands of dollars. I'm able to create faster because I no longer have to scour the internet for what I need. It's very convenient. Not to mention, I don't have to wait for my budget to allow for a new digital asset before I can create something new. I have this membership. I can just access it whenever I want. So what is it? Creative Fabrica is a website where you can access unlimited digital goods for just $9.99 a month, like $9.99. This uh, my jaw drops because this is this is an insane deal because everything comes with a commercial license as well, which means you're allowed to use them legally for profit. And and I I have to chuckle because this is this is less than I used to pay for just one font before (laughs) y'all. Like nine dollars and ninety nine cents for access. Okay, they have over six million fonts, graphics, and other digital resources that you will have full access to at any time. It's essentially like, like, to be honest, this is like the top Etsy seller's best kept secret that you are now privy to. (laughs) Welcome to the family. Did I mention you belong here? You belong here. Um, And on top of that, Creative Fabrica, so they discovered this podcast. They reached out to me and they were like, Lizzie, we want to offer your audience like a special, a special little perk. I'm just like, well, we love that. Tell us what it is. So Now, you guys can get one month free. You can get a free trial for up to 10 downloads, and you can test drive it and see if it's a good fit for you. Like, I I literally pay my own membership. I love it. So if nothing else, like, take a free trial. Stock up on some fresh stuff for free. Thank you, Creative Fabrica. And if you love the service as much as I do, it's just $9.99 per month to keep it going. And you can also um, cancel at any time. No questions asked. I love that. I love it when they do that. So if you want to jump in on the sweet deal, 
Just go to howtosellyourstuff.com forward slash creative. Again, that's howtosellyourstuff.com forward slash creative. And you can grab that free trial. I'm so excited, you guys, to share this with you because uh, this is like one of those pieces to the puzzle that can just change everything. It can just up the whole game. So just like let me know how it goes, okay? Yes. It, oh, I get so geeked out of it. Like, like micro niches are like, I'm obsessed with, as obsessed with them as people are with Taylor Swift. It's like my <laughs> thing. It's like, my, I get all twitchy about it. It's so great. What okay. do they call people like um, you? Like a, a niche? Like a Swifties? What's the, what's the terminology? Oh yeah. Niche. Except for I say niche. So it would it be niche? I don't know, but I got to <laughs> chew on that. That's really funny. Um, also no shade to Taylor. I think she's a queen. I'm just saying like, I'm genuinely the biggest nerd on the planet. Um, okay. So you alluded to AI and I know I've been like playing with like mid journey and ideogram and some of the more graphic stuff, but I have seen a lot of your posts on Instagram, which guys gold city ventures, Instagram is so good about like chat GPT. And so I'm just curious how you're using that tool and maybe others right now in helping to like build out your Etsy businesses and your, and your students. Yeah. So I have definitely not played with the image gener- generation stuff as much as you have. I have oh. had, I've not had great success quite honestly with my listing images. Like I can still create better listing images in Canva using my templates than I've been able to create with any, uh, like I've used mid journey. I've used, uh, what's it called? It's like deep, Dolly or Dolly? Yeah, Dolly 2. There's another one, D something. Who knows? But There's I've, so I've, many. I've, There's I've so tested, many. I've tested many of them. And I, you, you're you better than this I am, Lizzie, for it's sure. It's not the prompt. It's the SEO. It's the prompt. It's the prompt. Uh, but what I do use AI for that you're alluding to, I love using AI for idea generation. So if I have, like I just said, if we're using first Father's Day card or Father's Day card as an example... <laughs> I'll, I'll literally say, I'll, I'll type into chat GPT or Gemini or whoever, give me you know 50 different long tail keyword ideas for this main product and you know, the enlist first Father's Day card. And it will spit out all the stuff that I never would have even thought to look up. And now I'm kind of armed with, and I can export it to a CSV, do whatever I want. I can now use this to plug it into any keyword research tool. I can put this into E-Rank. I can put it into Sales Samurai. I can put it into Everbee, the tools you just mentioned. And yeah, so it's 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 great because it, it's it's not my brain thinking of stuff. It's a it's an AI that's a million times smarter than me. You can think of things a million times faster than I can. And then it just it needs a human to proof those ideas. So I love using it for idea generation and generating long tail keywords that I might have not thought of. I also like using it for listing descriptions. Uh, if I write something, I'll just say, yes. reword this in a friendlier tone or like add a little bit of sarcasm to this or make sure that ex- <laughs> it, this is extremely clear or, hey, I'm selling a Father's Day card. Does this description, like, is there anything else that you would include? And it might suggest like, oh, make sure that the person knows exactly what size this card is. Make sure the person knows that this is a digital product that's not getting shipped to them. And so it'll give you recommendations. You can just plug in your whole listing description. And and you can also get ideas. Just say, write a listing write a listing description for a Father's Day card, a pickleball first Father's Day card on Etsy. <laughs> and it will do that for you. And then you can just make tweaks as you see fit. But I'm, I'm not someone who likes to just take exactly what AI spits out and use it. Because usually there's a couple of things that maybe you need a little bit of a human touch for. Because they're not Etsy experts, but they are amazing yes. at idea generation and just generating content quickly. Um, so yeah, idea, idea generation, listing descriptions, uh, tags and titles are another one that I use it for. And pretty much anything to do with text, I mm-hmm. am leaning hard on AI for nowadays. That's that's part of my my standard operating procedure. That's like in my, in my guidebook. Make sure that you're running it through ChatGPT or Gemini and you're using these prompts and you know, this, these are the, this is the way that the listing description should be formulated. These are the questions it should be asking. And it's, it's been great. It's, it's really kind of tightened up my process and it takes a lot of that human brain power out of it. Oh, I was going to say something and I lost it. Cause I thought you were, I thought I thought you you were going to say more. <laughs> okay. Well that's a side note. So, okay. So my husband is in it. He, um, he sells like a AWS services in cloud and he's just like super geek. And so, um, what I thought would be kind of fun to tell you is that like, and I still use chat GPT a lot, but that the data feeding chat GPT is actually like 
from like the year 2020. It's like several years old. And yeah. so he told me to get onto Claude, um, C-L-A-U-D-E. Cause at first I thought Claude and I was thinking of like a cat claw, like Cla- I got Claude. <laughs> Claude. So it's C-L-A-U-D-E. But I wanted to say that because so many people can't get onto chat GPT. I think still like they can't get like a, you know, it's like maxed out on, um, oh, users sometimes where yeah. you can't get a, so I wanted to throw that out that if you want to use like Cloud is or cloud or cloud is um, much more like updated with the data on the web, and so I haven't actually tested this yet. But I was going to. Um, I wonder if it's a little more Etsy savvy now. And then the other thing I wanted to ask you is if you and Julie, by the way, public service announcement: Julie's his business partner, not his wife. He has a different wife. So <laughs> when I talk about Cody and Julie, I, I always like to make sure and uh, make that make that announce. But if you guys use them for other business applications as well, like writing emails or anything like that? Are you finding it helpful? Oh, we have used, yeah. And this, I think Gemini is probably similar to Claude Cloud, however you say that okay. guy's name, <laughs> because that's, that's powered by, that's powered by Google. That's Google's version. And I mean, Google owns search results. So they have so much data to play around with. I'm sure it's probably similar, but yeah, you're right. I think it's either 2020 or 2021 is like the last internet year that chat GPT is has been loaded with. I think they can I think chat GPT four can pull current stuff because I've asked about very specific relevant events and trendy things and it's been able to answer. So I'm not sure. I'm I'm definitely not an IT guy or That's good. I don't it changes every day, right? It's yeah. constantly updating and changing. But anyway, I just I okay, I'm note, a little yeah. bit of an AI. I do all <laughs> it's you know what I know what it is? It's because I'm actually so I'm actually so not technologically inclined. So I've really challenged myself to take the bulls, but I, I'm so sorry if you can hear my obnoxious dog barking, y'all. Um, okay, we questions. can switch All gears. Right. No, I, I didn't answer your question directly. You asked how we're using AI it? in other facets of our business. So yeah, we are using AI to generate anything text related. So we've had AI help us tell stories in email. We've had AI help us generate Instagram captions. AI help us generate YouTube descriptions. There are so many different applications. I'm trying to think some other ones off the top of our heads. AI for figuring out what templates, and I know we are going to talk about PLR a bit today, what templates might be really popular for our community, for our students. We have AI help us with, I mean, any, we have a whole shop. So all the titles, tags, listing descriptions and stuff for that. We have AI help us with our blog posts. We have AI help us with our podcast. We have AI help us with everything. It is a, uh, it is really, wow. again, it is just sped up the, I really like it for idea generation. I think it's sped up that like monumentally and then being able to just use it to clean up stuff as well. So running like, for example, I just did a guest post on someone's blog I think it was yesterday or two days ago, I just ran the whole th- thing through AI. I'm like, fix any like clunky sentences that are incorrect grammar or like messed up or just basically spell check everything and make sure that beyond Grammarly, because Grammarly will catch if you you know spell something wrong. But AI will, it's kind of like, uh, what's that tool? Hemingway, where it can identify like a, a sentence that's structured poorly. But on Hemingway, on Hemingway, you have to, you know, kind of, you know, either click, yes, you know, change this with AI, it'll just rewrite the whole thing for you. Um, so there's like so many different applications, whether it's creating content from scratch or running existing content through it to check it. You can even ask it about its opinion on something. So you could say, hey, here's my, here's my blog post on X, Y, and Z topic like answer this like you're an Etsy expert uh, uh, selling digital products. What am I missing that the average person might need to know in order for this article to be as helpful as possible? And they'll be like, oh, you, you didn't mention this. And we're like, oh, wow, duh. Like, I can't believe I didn't think of that. And a human might not have spotted that, but using AI, AI can, AI knows all. <laughs> so so uh, it, it can spot that. And then it can it can help us create a little bit of the content and then it need, just needs a little, you know, it needs a little makeup on it from a human money to change a couple words. And AI notoriously will have weird phrases that be like, you know, buckle up. We're about to take a ride through learning on Etsyville or like, oh, oh, golly gee. <laughs> um, so it's not always 100 percent accurate, which is which is why I said I like to use it to generate content. But then you definitely need the, the human touch to make it actually usable, readable, not have oh, just painfully. <laughs> tacky sentences in there um but yeah it, ai is great i think that they they think everyone on etsy is as campy as i am <laughs> they're just <laughs> not <laughs> it's so funny okay yes i will say it's so much easier to go back and edit than to have to create anything from scratch so yeah. like so many great 
so many great use cases. Oh, that was really neat. So chat GPT is what I always see on the Instagram. You mentioned PLR and I, I think it's really exciting. I keep seeing it everywhere, like more and more and more and more. And so can you please do a little lesson about what is PLR and how can it help us grow our Etsy shops and how do you guys use it? So PLR stands for private label rights. It's kind of like a fancy word for no reason. Basically what PLR is, is you're just selling a template for someone else to resell. You're giving someone commercial use rights to a template. So here's a real life example. We're both podcasters, Lizzie. I had a podcast media kit that I created. It was basically like showing all our numbers and our demographics and stuff. And we would send this off to advertisers. And so I was like, other people are searching for this. I did my keyword research and saw that other people were searching for a podcast media kit. I turned my podcast media kit into a PLR item, a private label rights. So basically all it is was I sold my template to other sellers who could then tweak it and resell it to other people. So that is basically all PLR is in a nutshell. It's creating a template that someone else can then design, tweak, make whatever alterations they want to it, and then resell it. This is different from just a normal item in an Etsy shop, because usually that's a big no-no. If you don't give someone commercial use rights to tweak your product and you know, resell it to someone else, like you could go after them. You could sue them potentially. You could you know, tell them to take that down. But if you're selling a PLR item, again, you're selling them the commercial use rights to resell that item. So that's basically what PLR is. It's a We do it a lot in Canva at Gold City Ventures. We have like a whole PLR shop basically where we give out templates to our community. And then after the templates have expired for the community to use for free, then we sell them in our PLR shop. And basically, so someone will pay 10 bucks, they'll get a 20 page Canva What's a, what's, a, what's a real example of one we had recently? Planner, a planner inserts. So for like a, a digital planner or for a physical planner, a 20 bucks or 10 bucks for a for planner inserts, they can go into Canva, they can go and kind of mess mess with things and then they can resell it on in their own Etsy shop. So yeah, that's, that's basically what PLR is. Um, it's a great way to, if you are in the kind of business to business space and you are already selling some of these items that other business owners have are buying, then yeah, you can you can start to what I like to call templatize some of the stuff that you're using or just use keyword research and create a template that seems in demand and then go and sell that commercial use rights. Now you don't have to do anything fancy with it. Like you can you literally just say in your Etsy description, like this this um you know this digital product is okay for like I'm granting you commercial use rights. This this is okay for resale. Cause you'll probably see in the kind of footer of most Etsy products that it says you know, this is only for, for personal use only, copyright, blah, 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 shop. But with PLR, it's a bit different where you're explicitly saying, hey, you can buy this from me, tweak it, change change the title, change some of the boxes around, change the colors, change whatever, and then you can resell it in your own Etsy shop or anywhere on the internet. So that was very long-winded. Sorry about that. But yeah, that's PLR in a it nutshell. Was not. <laughs> no, but I, you know what I am hearing? Um, I'm hearing people's thoughts ping off. Like, why would you want to, like, I want to talk about the advantages of it because they, I'm, they're thinking, why would you want to create your own competition that way? Why would you go create something that they can just reuse? And when you've already, when you've done the work to find the, uh, like kind of the hidden opportunity on Etsy. So for us, we sell PLR for more of the shorter tail keyword stuff, if that makes sense. So okay. let's go back. Let's go back to our tried and true example the first, uh, the Father's Day card. So we might sell a Father's Day card template in our PLR shop. It's not the pickleball first Father's Day card. It's not the Chihuahua first Father's Day card for fathers in Iowa. Like it's it's not the super niche down. <laughs> it's not the super niche down version <laughs> that we're selling as a template. It is the more basic version. So I don't know if other people kind of think in that same like mindset that we do, but that's, that's how we do it. So we have like a beautiful short tail keyword PLR item that we sell, and then people can go and tweak it and bring it and kind of pull it in whatever direction they want based on the keyword research. I think our audience is a bit different. We do have people kind of outside of the gold city ventures community that goes and buys stuff from our shop. But as a whole, like a lot of these people are learning from us anyway. So they, they realize the value. I mean, the people who are, who have, joined us this far, 33, 30 something minutes into the podcast, they're probably realizing how big of a proponent I am of keyword research. So it's the same thing with our audience. I think they understand that they're not just going to buy something from us, throw it up in their shop and make a million sales. That's not how it works. It's just going to drastically cut down on the time it takes you to create something. Because if you can buy yes. a 20 page Canva template, 
it's going to save you hours and hours and hours and it might cost you 10 bucks to buy and then you can tweak and change things and make it a longer tail keyword item and then you can go and resell it in your shop. So that's that's kind of the allure and that's kind of our strategy is yeah, sell the short tail keyword item, give people the skills. It's kind of like the, you know, teach a man to fish instead of just giving him a plate full of salmon. Um, t- give them the skills to then turn that more basic template into a whole bunch of different products based on what they find in their keyword research. I think it's completely epic. For a whole separate project I'm working on, I used all PLR stuff because for me, I don't have the strength of being an amazing designer, creator, whatever. I'm an excellent communicator, but like, please do not go ask me to create a 20 page. (laughs) That's going to take me a year and I'm going to cry a lot. So um, being able to use it is great. So I have a question for you. Does the PLR part transfer as well? Does that make sense? So if I buy if I buy a, a PLR template from you, and I go and I you know rebrand it, recreate it a little bit, and I'm selling it, do I also get to sell it with PLR right with rights or no? Depends on the seller. We do not allow people to do that. So you can't okay. PLR our PLR. There's no double PLRing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do not allow. Yeah, we explicitly say in our terms and conditions in our description of our products, you cannot resell this template as a template. To other pe- for other okay. people to use as commercial use. I guess they could resell it as a template for personal use. Like, let's say we had a any kind of a card, or like a birthday card, and the end buyer had to go in and change the name and the dates and the times and the location, all that stuff. That's fine, but they can't. the The person who sold it to them can't sell it to them for them to just sell it and sell it and sell it. And it can't just be like this sell train. If the, I think that's what you're yeah. asking, right? Yeah, it totally was because I think that's interesting. And that does that does make it a little more um, attractive. You know what I mean? That makes it seem a little less like it's just never going to end. Um, yeah. That I just think I think those details are are fascinating. So um, tell us, we already kind of talked about the, like income potential. Tell us what's going on in the Gold City Ventures community. Like what I know in the beginning, before you and I started recording, you shared some really fun stories about uh, some successes that people are having. But I also just like love for you to paint the picture of what the community is like over there, because I think you you guys have fostered a particularly amazing one. So I'd love for my listeners to hear more about that. Yeah, the community has been growing like crazy. We now have 4,500 members in our community. And every single day, we just see amazing posts. Like someone just had recording this in the beginning of March, someone had a crazy, or not someone, plenty of people, but I have one person in mind in particular. I, I'm not going to give away what they're selling exactly, but they just had a wild Valentine's week. I think they ended up with 500 plus sales just during Valentine's week from the dessert products that they created. So there's a lot of exciting, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, exactly. Like, like oh, I, you know, that's a, that's a pretty penny in a week. But yeah, things are things are exciting. Things are are heating up. We're seeing sellers make sales faster than ever. A lot of people are have been upset when Etsy went from like five percent to six point five percent fees. And the reason Etsy was doing that was to cover their butts with their marketing expense. Like I'm sure you've been seeing, I've been seeing in my personal shop that I've been getting a lot more offsite ads. Like Etsy is spending money to put your products in front of people on Google and Bing and some of these other search engines and. We uh, just a couple weeks ago we had the Super Bowl. Etsy spent who knows how many million dollars on the Super Bowl. So Etsy is spending so much money on getting buyers onto the platform, and so I'm a I'm a huge fan of that. And I think that's why our sellers are making sales faster than ever. And we've actually been onboarding like more coaches. We've been doing challenges throughout the year, which has been really fun. We just did a big January challenge. We actually have an April challenge coming up, where basically for the entire month, like we will give you three or four PLR templates. We have you create them, um, do your keyword research. You take that base template, create something awesome. Then you can submit it for review from one of our group experts. Like the woman who did most of them last time, Sasha Hutchinson. She has, I think at this point, 20,000 plus sales on Etsy. She just is killing it. She quit her job as an accountant and went full-time into Etsy. And so she was the one who did reviews last time. But we have a whole team now. We just onboarded someone new last month or two months ago into our group. And so, yeah, basically in the community, it's like we have our group experts answering questions 24-7. But the really cool part is seeing students help each other. We have students from 2019 when we originally launched our course in our community helping the newbies. It's so cool to see. It's someone who now has 10,000 sales in their shop. They're helping someone who's just getting their shop open. So 
it is just, yeah, it gives me a warm feeling every time I log into Facebook and go into the ePrintables group. It's it's awesome. It has been super rewarding. I love to see the impact that we're making. We actually just had someone a couple weeks ago, I think it was end of January, get featured in CNBC for making $77,000 last year in her shop. So it's been really cool. Do you ever find yourself wondering how on earth earth to respond to a customer's DM when they're either asking about their order status or upset about something. Today's episode is brought to you by my very own customer service templates, PDF download and mini course. The most common post I'm seeing in the Etsy forum these days are people asking for advice in dealing with various customer service problems and situations. I totally get it, you guys. Like when we're in the heat of that moment and we're feeling frazzled or overwhelmed, it can be extra hard to know what to say to diffuse a situation. Like we want to sound empathetic and confident. We want to be professional and warm. Like we wonder how our tone is coming across to that customer as we type out our response and worry that one wrong word could land us in one star review land. Like not to mention, you know, not everyone was born with the gift of the written word. Maybe you're someone who is utterly exhausted by the idea of wordsmithing great responses to customers, and you'd much rather spend your energy on product development or marketing brainstorming. I totally get you, and I totally got you. And now you don't have to figure it out on your own. When you order my customer service templates offering, I'm going to literally hand you over 20 different already written templates for daily, common, and those difficult conversations. They're already written out exactly how I use them so you can actually see them in action. And then I'm also gonna give them to you as like a fill in the blank template that you can just make your own and save in your Etsy snippets or an easy to access document on your phone or computer. With this, I'm gonna throw in a mini course that goes over in detail my personal customer service strategy so that when you do need to come up with a response to something in the future, you're already gonna have that inner culture for customer service that's gonna guide your writing and I promise it'll make it so much easier. You can grab these tools today at howtosellyourstuff.com. Leave the guesswork out of your DM responses. I'll do the writing so you can get back to creating. On printables, that's so cool. That is yes, so cool. Yes, digital and products, yeah. Like, yeah, that's crazy to me because I used to do physical. And so the cha-ching would happen and I'd go, oh, no. And now oh, no. the cha-ching happens. Like, yes! <laughs> like, just, you know? Um, uh, so... Here's what I here's what I will add. I have had a lot of my listeners and followers and even my own students go through the e-printables course, even if they're like physical product sellers or print on demand, because they want to add either they want to build a separate shop that's digital products or they want to start adding some streams of um some more passive streams through their shop. I have one one I'm thinking of in particular who she sells crocheted items, but she added an entire section of her shop that she's selling patterns. So um, a little, you know, a little different, but it's still a downloadable printable thing. And she's created this whole separate, more passive income stream. And now she's like, do I really want to keep crocheting hats? You know, maybe I'll just make more. You know, so um, I'm a really big advocate of your course. It's on my like resources page of my website. I'm just a big fan, but you guys... Unlike mine, yours isn't evergreen. You like open yours up at certain points throughout the year. So you're getting ready to do that. And I would love for you to share about ePrintables in case it's just an avenue that people are ready to go down right now. They want to add the income stream or they're ready to get started. And I mean, you are just one of my trusted groups to send them to. So please. That. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to the, the handmade homies and the POD power users out there because I think... One thing that's kind of slept on, I know you mentioned people coming from your community, they are selling handmade already or POD and they want to add some more passive income streams to their shop. I had a friend who was, she was creating a lot of the stuff herself. So she was putting, she was creating the SVGs or buying them, putting them on mugs and t-shirts. She has this like huge cricket machine and like this embroider. I don't even know what the half this equipment's called. But she then started selling the SVGs that she was creating herself. And she was like, this is so much better. <laughs> so instead of putting that SVG on a print on demand product or a product that she's actually creating herself and like, what's it called? Sublimation, I think what she was doing on the mugs. Yes. I don't even, I, yeah, I, I, clearly I'm not very well versed in this space, Lizzie, but yeah, she was doing all this stuff and making pretty good money. But then she started listing this stuff as SVGs in her Etsy shop and people started to buy them because they didn't want to, they didn't want to do the work of creating the SVG. And I think she was drawing stuff out and procreate. She's a pretty good artist. It's like, there is so many unlocks to kind of, if you're already doing this and you already are a handmade seller or a POD seller, there's so many opportunities to take what you already have, to take what you're already using 
and then create a digital product out of it. Okay, back to your question. So yes, ePrintables is going to be open. We do two big public enrollments per year. It just makes it a lot easier. Like we, our, our coaches are ready. People are like in there ready to answer questions 24 seven. This is when, this is the time of year we tell our coaches like you gotta be on because we're gonna have a whole flood of new people in here who wanna sell printables, who wanna make passive income with digital products. So yeah, the course is gonna be open from March 25th to April 1st. And yeah, like I said, it's it's one of two. So the other one is usually we do an April launch and a November launch. And those are the two big cohorts that we let in. And it's it's a ton of fun. The, the really cool thing with this one is we're lining it up with the April challenge. I know I just alluded to the January challenge we had back in January. So people are going to be creating a bunch of stuff for all the upcoming holidays. Like I know Easter is probably going to be a little late because Easter is on May or March 31st. But all the May holidays going on. There's Mother's Day, there's Father's Day, graduation's coming up. So we always are very cognizant of what event is coming up next because in my opinion, that's how I've been able to make, that was kind of, kind of how I had my big first week in my shop. People can listen to the full story in the last episode we did together, Lizzie, but it was during Valentine's week and I ended up making over $700 in one week. And it was amazing. And it was right after I got started in my shop and that, that's what hooked me. So I'm, I'm such a big proponent of, selling seasonal products and selling trendy products and selling products that are fit for that time of the season. And it's worked really, really well for our students as well. So that's kind of a special thing that we have going on for this enrollment in particular is if you join between March 25th and April 1st, like you're just in time for the April challenge. And we'll be kind of just pushing your butt along, like holding your feet to the fire and getting that momentum is the most important thing. So many people buy a course, buy a membership. You know how many people buy a Planet Fitness membership and don't go? It's like 95% of their members have, haven't stepped foot in there in a year. It's the same thing with online courses, but we knew that when we went into this whole thing. And so we're like, we're not going to be the average. So we like really help to push our students to take action because once you get that first product listed, once you make that first sale, the momentum just snowballs and snowballs and snowballs and there's no stopping it. So yeah, March 25th, April 1st, enrollment will be open. And I know you're going to be giving them a freebie. So there's something that we sell. It's a seasonal products ebook, but we have a special link for you, Lizzie, that you can give out to anyone who's listening to this podcast. So Lizzie will have a special link for you. Basically, this is what the seasonal product secret, it's the name of this ebook. Basically, what it does is it breaks down every single month and will tell you what products have historically been successful and will make you sales in that month. So you look in January, it has a bunch of January printable ideas, February, March, April, May for the entire year. And let me tell you, if you go through this seasonal product secret ebook and you create a couple of those printables for each month, all you have to do is you have to get just, just hammer this book for one year. And by the time that year's over now, you know, let's, let's say you're starting in April, you do April, May, you get to March of the next year, you finish now you have seasonal products for every single season and they resell and they resell. Like I have stuff from 2018, 2019 seasonal stuff that still resells during those holidays. I have Valentine's day stuff that still does really well today from 2019. It's crazy. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of the chasing seasonal trends. I actually pulled up this really cool testimonial from last year around this time because just to tell you how awesome April is and kind of getting into summer for selling printables. This is from Eliza in our group. She said, happy Easter and Passover to those who celebrate. I joined the 100 sales club on Friday and we have a little 100 sales club that celebrates people who had 100 sales. We sent out a prize, a bunch of fun stuff. And this is three days after that. And she says, I have now joined the 200 plus sales club as of today. And she opened her store in mid January, had about 34 sales. And then Yes, yeah, she said Easter week really took off for me, pushed me over the 100 sales mark and into the 200 plus sales lane. Really motivating for me to keep creating because you don't know what will be a hit for you until you try. Thanks for all the help in this group. So yeah, that is just, I, I love reading stuff like that. You can tell I'm, I'm getting <laughs> oh, yeah, jazzed so up. Lizzie. I know. Yeah. And it's, uh, she's using the seasonal product strategy. So please, if you do anything, you don't have to join the course. I don't want to pressure people to join the course. If, you, if you're like, hey, I'll try to figure it out on my own. Totally cool. I, I want you to get as much value mm -hmm. as you can out of this podcast. Download that free ebook. If you want to come join us in the course where we hold your hand, take you step by step, A to Z, creating digital products, love to have you, but no pressure. Please take the ebook though, because it is 22 pages of keyword gold and figuring out what seasonal trends are going to be popular and what you can create in your shop. I love it. That book is, it's so good. Um, and I do think that it's, it's, 
a way to get a quick win is to find the micro niches in the seasonal space. Yes. Like it's just <laughs> game set match. And then, and then you've got the bug and then you're going to be like, I understand why Lizzie's a lunatic and she's more <laughs> interested in keyword research than pop culture. I can't help it. Um, but that is wonderful. Thank you for being so generous. Cody, y'all are so sweet to, um, to provide that for, for us. And we're very appreciative of you. Um, thank you so much for coming back. We obviously will see you again in the fall, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, but, but thank you. I hope you had fun. I always have fun. You can tell I'm I'm lit up. I think you said I don't know if this was during our recording or before our recording that I I'm one of the only people who can match or exceed your energy levels. And that I take that as a big compliment. <laughs> <laughs> you are I remember when I was pregnant trying to talk with you and I'm just like, I, I officially have no brain. I am pudding. I am pudding because this man thinks faster than I do and that is rare. Um and I don't mean to toot my own horn. I'm more just like my husband makes fun of me that if you put me on 1.2 speed, you're, I'm going to sound like the chipmunks, I'm one of the chipmunks <laughs> as opposed to where most people you've got to speed them up. So it's always a pleasure. Give our love to Julie and her family and your new wife. My goodness gracious, all of the life changes. And, and guys, thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for listening to us talk faster than people should ever talk in the best way. We hope you had fun. And until next time, go make something awesome. I love y'all. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap on this episode of How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.